Uh, I want to give a couple little brief announcement points thing, and then we'll take some questions, and then we will uh, we'll end it. I think that's good. Oh, hi, Josh. Um, Hello. Hello. So, okay, so first we'll address, you know, game launch. Uh, I'm not going to give a concrete date yet, but we will start limited testing this weekend and do larger tests throughout the week with some of our testers. Um, I don't think that we will do a public play test prior to launch, um, but that could change if we want to stress test something, but I think that we have enough people for testing. We will probably send out another small tester form again, just since we've gotten a, a couple hundred new players since the last time we did it, or new people in the Discord. Um, but I wouldn't expect to be accepted if you already were declined or not accepted last time. Um, as for launch, we are looking at a week or two after we finish testing, um, just to fix up any bugs. So I would say that, you know, look for it end of September, sometime October, potentially. Um, but we definitely want to get it out and go back to doing some more work on Northern. We have some update ideas, but... That's where we're at on launch. Um, in terms of some questions that I've seen that I just want to answer, uh, first, the game won't be paid access. We're going to just do everything free. Um, while I liked that Northwind was paid access when it launched, and I think that it was a great idea for Northwind, uh, I don't think that for this genre or game it makes sense, and I don't think that we will do that for future games. Um, so yeah, no paid access. Everything will be free on launch. Um, another one that I heard being talked about or asked a lot was like purchasing of like um, like custom armors or like custom weapons, stuff like that that's common in Rome games. Um, I'm assuming most of the people here probably have checked out Northwind a little bit. Yeah, in terms of that, I don't think that we will ever do that. It's not necessary. The framework from Northwind right, allows us to have pretty big user customizability, so we don't really need to sell anything to that extent. Um, so I think that answers that. I don't think that there's anything else really major question-wise. Jerome, can you think of anything? So you can be asked a lot. I haven't really been asked much besides launch. <laughs> yeah, and the biggest one. Okay, then yeah, we'll start taking questions out of general. Um, one that I saw a little bit ago was a bounty system. Yes, there will be a bounty system. Um, it's going to be a little bit different for Northwinds. It's going to tie directly in with our reputation system. Uh, so you'll just kind of have to wait out for that. I'm not going to give a ton of sneak peeks or trailers or suggestions of what the game's going to look like post-launch. Um, but yeah, there's a bounty system, and it's a little different. Um, what difference can you expect from BI Northwind? So there's actually quite a bit of differences. So contrary to popular belief, I did not buy Northwind to, for all of the assets. Um, that doesn't really make sense. So one example of that is that there won't be any Northwind models um, in BI. There might be some exceptions. Like, I think that we're keeping like the bear model as an example, because I think it's funny, and that's kind of... I don't know, like a cool little Easter egg thing tie back, but you know, we didn't tie in uh, all the models are redesigned, right? We're not using um, even down to like buildings or droppables or ores or ingots, like it's all kind of different. So that's definitely one aspect. Um, gameplay wise, a really, really big difference between BI and Northwind is roles. So, one of my big gripes with Northwind, and it's not something we can really rectify anymore without a big wipe is the role system. I think it penalizes players for joining and or leaving the official factions, which I don't like. Um, and I think it's also just kind of a convoluted um, system. And it makes a lot of sense uh, when you consider when and why Fred made it. That way, Fred grew up playing RuneScape, and anybody who has played RuneScape will recognize a lot of similarities between Northwind, um, even TNF, um, and RuneScape. Um, so that was a big reason the roles exist in the way they do. I personally don't like it for the reasons I stated. So roles don't exist in the same way anymore. Um, we have deprecated that in favor of a reputation system. That's a slider. And that's all attached to the same character. That way, if you're in Rome and you leave, you no longer have to regrind everything. You don't lose everything. Or if you, um, I, I don't know, it, we don't have natives either. So I couldn't give an example. But uh, if we were using an exact Northwind formula here, right? Say you were on the native team or on the barbarian team um, and you wanted to go play on a different account. Um, or go join Rome, you wouldn't lose all of your progress, which I think is a really, really big thing that I wanted to push for this, so that required a lot of a rewrite. Uh, so that's another big difference. Um, there's a lot of mechanical gameplay things that we've changed in terms of professions, um, how things are grinded out, stuff like that. Uh, the grind is definitely a lot easier in this game. 
Uh, one of the big reasons is because it's full loot, which is another really, really big difference. Um, everything is lootable. So down to your clothing, all of your cosmetic items, all of your weapons, things like that. And there won't be an insurance factor because I think that it is... I, I don't know. I think it kind of ruins the hardcore element Stupid. of the game. That's the one. So, yeah, everything is full lootable, which means that everything's easier to obtain because of that. Uh, we've added durability to more items in game as opposed to just guns. Um, horses are an example. Uh, we're reworking a lot of events and activities to m- make more dynamic uh, interactions between hostile factions, so i.e. Rome and Greece or Rome and the Gaelic factions. So, yeah, my mic isn't bad. I know that I'll actually kill your family. Stop. Sorry, it's kind of shittier you. than it normally does. I'll keep it a buck with you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> not like a normal mic, yeah. but All right. Invest um, in scrolling through questions. Um, let's see. Um, will there be a lot? Will system? BI take priority over Northwind development? Up. We yeah. uh, it's in, different the, in the middle. Hush. You don't. Hear... Okay. Hush. Um, law system, that's going to be more RP based than anything. Um, like obviously there's going to be a bounty system. So, you know, players that commit crimes in game will get bounties. Um, the specific laws will be more of like an RP thing that we can work on, uh, kind of in conjunction as developers with the RP side of it. Uh, but I think the closest thing to that will be the reputation system, i.e. killing Romans will decrease your reputation with the Roman faction, which will make Roman NPCs react to you differently. Um, whether that's outright hostility, refusing to trade with you, stuff like that. Um, so I think that's the closest to that. Will there be cannons? No, there will not be cannons. Um, but there are ballistas, um, scorpions. Uh, we're eventually going to make catapults um, and just kind of work down ancient artillery. Uh, I feel like we put something in teasers for that. Maybe. Yeah, we did, but just draw it in. Um, okay, crawl, coming down. Will BI take priority over Northwind development after BI release? So after BI releases, uh, I will be freeing Northwind developers to go back to Northwind. Because I've conscripted them for a few months. So specifically, Tiber and Brad will be focusing completely on Northwind uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, whereas Zan and I will continue to stay over here on BI and continue to pump out some content. Um, we also have a couple other projects that are in the works. So modelers and map makers are starting on those. So we're ready to actually start scripting those. We have everything. We don't need to wait. That's been one of the larger delays for BI. Um, and obviously, you know, this was our first project post-Northwind. So we've learned a lot of things on how we want to handle this going forward and, you know, things we want to do to expedite the process. One of those things is just having, I have a more complete idea of what we need model-wise, um, and we've gotten a better team of modelers together so that we can have that expedited for future games, um, which will in turn make scripting a lot quicker, because uh, they won't need to wait for assets. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I would say that they're going to be prioritized equally. I, like I said from the beginning, it's different teams, so there will be different teams for different games. Um, occasionally, you know, people will be shuffled around for other projects, but I, I think Northwind's going to get a lot of love. Um, the summer break for all of us on Northwind kind of inspired all of us to want to work on a little bit more. I know Tyra and Brad really have some good ideas that they want to push out of Northwind, um, and we've kind of fleshed out those ideas a lot together. I personally feel a little bit more motivated to work on Northwind after uh, taking a break from that community for a little bit. Uh, it definitely wears on you as a developer, so um, yeah, I think it's going to be pretty equal. Uh, Workflow-wise, um, will the economy be player-made? Um, I would say it's going to be both. So there's definitely NPC shops, and we definitely encourage player trading in shops. So it's just going to kind of be both, depending on the product and what you're doing. Um, and yeah, furnaces, smelters, anvils, all that's going to be there. There's a full, you know, crafting economy system, same way as Northern, if not even more. Um, will there be land taken in cannon battles? Uh, we have discussed the idea of having like a conquest system um, or some sort of genre map, stuff like that. It's been floated around. As of now, that won't take place. We will do large-scale like battles that staff will facilitate. Um, but I wouldn't say that we're going to do anything that's like a cannon battle. It's going to drastically change anything in the game, at least as of now. Um, obviously, things can change post-launch, but as it stands now, I don't anticipate us ever doing that. What game are we even waiting for and stuff? Um, I don't know how to answer that. Uh, and you're waiting for Bellum and Piri, which is a uh, survival roaming game, but that's pretty cool. Um, what are some examples for quests? So, on launch, I am not confident that we're going to have a super wide variety of quests. It's just been something that's kind of a lower, lower priority feature for us in terms of getting this out. Um, you know, Tiber and Brad and our other developers want more time to launch 
or prior to launch so they can get things like that in. Uh, I've been overruling that because I'd rather us get the game out, get it in people's hands, and then we can kind of develop the game around the community. I also don't want to continue to neglect Northwind and some of our other projects. So we will be launching with a limited amount of quests and expanding based on the needs of the game and community and kind of direction we want to go post-launch and we see how things start to flesh out. Um, let's see. Rice will be focused on Northwind while also working on BI. That's not entirely true. Um, you can ask modelers uh, if they decide they want to talk to you. But we've gotten a pretty big backlog worth of models done for Northwind to implement once the programmers are back. Um, so I'd expect a lot of new content for Northwind coming out over the next few months, which will be excited. Uh, Dementia Dog is hidden somewhere on the map, so feel free to find that. If this runner fails, we actually focus on Northwind. I don't anticipate this failing, and I don't anticipate Northwind failing. I think that Northwind is going to see a very, very big revitalization with some updates coming out that Tyra has planned um, and that we've kind of built out on our, our own internal roadmap. Um, and I anticipate this doing extremely well. There's not really competition in the genre. Um, there hasn't really been any innovation in the last like five or six years in this genre. And I, I mean, objectively, I think that Northwind and the framework that it's built on is extremely well, or built extremely well. Um, it's a fun game. It's obviously a very good recipe for success because it's worked for so long. So I, I don't anticipate BI failing at all. Um, working down, we'll be able to take... Uh, we'll... Will the new player experience be kind of dog like Northwind is? Um, yeah, the new player experience definitely needs some work on Northwind, which is one of our going to be our first kind of hit list items when we get to Northwind. I would say the new player experience is going to, going to be different. Um, I still don't fully believe in a ton of hand-holding when it comes to new player experiences. I think some of that is the job of the community, and it makes it more fun. I think some of the fun of Northwind, for me at least, when I initially played it, and same with TNF, was learning it myself. Um, I think that we will have a tutorial at some point um, that will be different for Northwinds and not as, I guess, mandatory. But uh, we definitely want to improve the new player experience because it's one of our lowest lowest stats. Um, yeah, a lot of suggestions will be added. We take suggestions pretty seriously. Um, if everything's lootable, are people going to be unwilling to grind for items that are rare since they lose it? Um, I think that with everything lootable, rare items will become more of a statement piece. So when players use them, it's A, it's a challenge of I'm better than you in combat or my faction is better than you in combat. And B, it just sets them apart um, as sort of a flex. So I don't anticipate people not grinding rare items as an example. But we've also decreased the grind for a lot of things to make it, to accommodate for that. So, um, that is based off Roman law. Um... It's not necessarily off Roman law, so bounties are going to be more tied to reputation. So, like, you could have a bounty against a Greek faction, as an example. Um, or I wouldn't say faction, that would confuse. Um, against the Greek AI entity. Um, whereas you might not have one against Romans for killing certain players. So that's an example. What can and can't be lootable? Everything can be lootable, there's nothing that won't be. Um, that's a controversial decision for some, um, but it's the direction I want to take the game. I think that our game should be hardcore and should punish players. Um, and th that's the direction we're going to go. Uh, I anticipate that most, if not all, of our future projects will be the same way. Uh, it's a little late to do that for Northwind, so I don't think that we can, but that's kind of where we're at. Will there be deserts in different climates? Yes, we fully anticipate having more than one map um, outside of Massilia. Um, our plan is to grow and then um i guess shrink as the community expands and contracts so that's just going to kind of depend on player count but yeah we definitely want to have more more variety in the environment um combat animation looks kind of janky um i don't want to say that it's changing uh but we've definitely smoothed things out a little bit more um since that teaser i mean that when that teaser was posted that was literally our first iteration of the uh three directional combat because i just wanted to get that in people's in people's hands to see um, so we definitely smoothed things over a little bit more since then. Um, will there be an option to change your avatar? Yes, there will be an option to change your avatar, and yes, it will be... Um, you have to pay for it. Uh, our premium currency in this obviously won't be ducats, but just for ease of conversation, I will call it ducats. Um, you will have to use that currency to change your character, um, but as opposed to Northwind, there will be a lot more ways to obtain it in-game. Um, so it's not strictly a premium currency that you purchase. Um, as of now, we're not going to do anything with taxes specifically for the Senate. Um, a lot of that stuff is going to be RP. Uh, there will be gameplay features for senators and, I guess, an entrenched aristocracy in Rome and then potentially with other uh, in-game factions as well. 
but that will probably come post-launch. So a lot of it is just going to be RP, as I don't think that, um, I, I use quotations on this, uh, quote, elected officials uh, should have any say in gameplay direction. Um, that being said, you know, we definitely take suggestions seriously, but I don't think that a uh, elected body should have any serious control over the direction of development or the game itself. It just opens up the game to a lot of risk. I see another um, question you should answer. Will armor play a role? Yes, so armor does play a very big role in the game. So for one, it's a durability object, so you have to constantly repair it or it breaks. Um, two, it does have a base damage negate, and it also slows your character. So there will be metas around, you know, extremely fast but lightly armored individuals versus heavily armored and kind of tanky individuals that are slower. Um, so that's going to be for the player to explore and for us to balance more as we play. Um... We'll ever expand dev team for both games. We are actually constantly looking for developers for both games. The problem with developers, specifically programmers for Northwind, is it's a completely custom framework, so it's not something that anybody can have prior experience in. So it has to be something we can train and teach, which we have been able to do with Brad and Tiber really effectively. Um, but when we do that, it definitely slows down our development process, and it takes a very specific kind of programmer that can work on this. Um, Zan and Josh have that a lot more. Um, but it's, it's definitely not an easy thing to learn. And there's also a huge trust factor with it. Because even if I make a programmer sign an NDA and, you know, all of these contracts, all it takes is the game getting leaked once and Northland has never been leaked. And I don't intend for it to ever be leaked. So I would say that our development team will continue to slowly grow. But we are in the talks of onboarding a couple more developers in a more public capacity. Um, we'll stop for useless items. Um... So, selling items in the game to NPCs will definitely be dependent on a lot of things. One will be your reputation. Um, you will potentially get different prices um, for either certain faction armors with certain vendors and definitely with factions that you have a higher reputation with, um, which could make it more profitable. I would anticipate that that's going to be a lot more common than selling to players because of the fact that everything is full loot. People aren't going to be able to just have a massive bank of items um, or their they're set like they do in Northwind that they don't ever have to change because they insure it. So I anticipate buying and selling between NPCs and players will be drastically increased. Um, will there be professions? Yes, there are professions. Uh, will there be event items that are limited and unlootable? Um, as of now, I'm going to say no. I don't like the idea of unlootable objects. I think it creates a very, very big balance issue in the game. So I would say probably not. Um, but that could change, so don't take that as you know, gospel truth. Will there be sub-official factions of administration management? Um, it's something we've talked about specifically with Greek states, um, is having some, like, semi-official faction statuses. Um, we still haven't fully decided where we land on that. So as of now, I'm going to say no, the only official faction is Rome, and we may do limited support of other factions. Um, Greek, Gallic, um, and potentially neither. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't count on that. Which pretty there's a Rome genre. Um, I think that the Rome game that Colt and Aces are working on looks really cool. Uh, I think it's still DR tech, um, which has its pros and cons. You know, it's a very established framework, which makes it easy to find developers and expand on. Uh, but it also makes it extremely exploitable because everyone has a copy of it, and um, it, it makes it hard. It definitely has some limitations. I think it looks cool. Um, I welcome competition. So, you know, I I think that any innovation is good innovation, especially in this genre because it's been neglected for so long. Um, will there be different biomes? Yeah, like I said, we potentially will have some more. Um, please add a way to give me pre-made kits to new players. Uh, well, we are definitely having some starter packs that people can purchase, so by all means. Um, but on a more serious note, I think the idea is that factions, knowing that everything is full loot, will take more precautions, A, with new players losing items, um, which will mean that their, you know, elite player is going to get the better gear. Uh, but two, they'll have their own internal logistics. Uh, one of the first updates we plan on working on post-launch, and this is kind of something that we're doing for both Northland and BI, is a really big faction overhaul that includes, like, faction banks and things like that. So I'd be on the lookout for that pretty quickly post-launch, um, quickly being relative. So, um, What's the gap between a new player and a veteran looking like? I, I think it's going to be similar to Northland. You know, it's a combat system that takes some time to learn. I think that everybody can learn it. Um, I think that... Like all games, we're going to have sweats, and there's nothing we can do about that. But, uh, excuse me, give me a sec. Um, but, 
I don't think that it's going to be impossible for new players to succeed, especially given the variety of weapons and armor um, that are in the game. So there's going to be a lot of different metas, ideally. Um, to answer Stone's point about uh, clothes being lootable, and I think the impl uh, the implication of that is players being able to be naked, uh, that isn't possible. If you loot and lose all of your clothes, you just go to like a basic white tunic that looks really bad and torn, so you won't be able to be like naked. Um, what's means of transportation? So obviously the game is walkable. Um, let me see if you're a northern player. You're a northern player. So on a landmass size, the game is comparable to Buvel if all of the islands were attached. Um, but it feels more open because there's less hills and ocean and everything, so it feels more walkable. We also have a fully working horse system, so you know, be on the lookout for that. Um, we are also working with uh, a Roblox beta system that's coming out. Um, to answer Shed's point about newer players earlier, that will allow matchmaking, so we can place new players in servers with new players. Um, that's obviously not a complete fix for a skill gap, but it'll help at least on the early stages of players. Um, let me scroll back down. I'm probably all the way to the bottom. Um, what's your opinion on the other row? Okay, I read that. Will maps represent real locations? Uh, yeah, we definitely want our maps to be kind of representative of real locations. So our first one is um, Massalia. It's we we found images of um, some like city maps during the Roman time period. Uh, we we're obviously set around Caesar and Gaul, so the city looks very Romanized. Um, but yeah, all of our locations are going to be real. There's not going to be nothing fantasy about our locations. Uh, we do intend to have bosses to an extent. We have a couple camps spread around the map already with hostile NPCs of varying degrees. And then uh, with the reputation system between AI factions, there will be, you know, parties of Roman soldiers around the city, parties of Greek si soldiers around their camp, um, and parties of Gaelic soldiers around their little... Uh, um, I wouldn't even call it an Ophidium, but around their small little town. Um, and those are going to be things that you can fight, as well as, you know, the bandit camp spread around. And as we expand the game more, we'll have some more dynamic events like that. Um, we will not let people change keybinds, but combat is also not keybind-based. It's going to be directional. So what will be purchasable with premium currency? Um, as it stands now, it's going to be mostly cosmetic items, and then, like, mid- to low-level gear will be purchasable. So I know an example of a starter kit that we have is a Hastati starter kit. So it essentially just includes like a light chainmail, a gladius, and a small shield, and a helmet. Um, but we are definitely not letting pay-to-win items like super rare, super high damage dealing items be purchasable. And everything is lootable regardless of what you purchase. So, um, I like the idea of viable land. It's just not plausible for Roblox because of the limitations of the platform. So we probably can't or won't do that. Um, Shed, I'm confused by your question of treating the community differently. Um, so, if you want to restate that, I'll get to it when I scroll back down. Uh, will Playmate Clans have something to do? Yeah, so, on launch, we are definitely going to have some activities for player-made factions uh, that revolve around the reputation system, uh, like plus or minusing as a faction, and then we do want to do a big faction-wide update for all of our games, so. I'm going to just skim some questions because we're kind of getting on, kind of dragging. Um, yes, there is still going to be a bank system uh, similar to Northwind, but it's just not going to be like an insurance system where you can insure items. But you'll definitely have like your own warehouse. If you could attack in city limits and you're near Roman soldiers, they defend you if you have a good enough reputation. Um, we haven't built out the AI that complex yet. Um, not sure if we will. So I won't say they'll defend you if you have a high enough rep but they will attack the person attacking you if they have a low enough rep, um, if they're, like, hostile to Rome. Um, yeah, there's there's complete range combat. So, obviously, we have bows. Uh, we have, like, light crossbows. We have throwable throwables. Um, I know we have axes, knives, um, javelins, pylums off the top of my head. I think we have slings as well already made. So there's going to be a decent variety of range combat as well. Um, will war traits be thing in the future? I know for sure we intend to have wagons in the future, so I would say that it's not an impossibility that we do things like chariots. Um, but that would A, that would definitely depend on the next map we do if we do another one. 
um, you know, if we go the route that we're playing right now and doing Elasia as the next map, um, we probably won't do Chariots because it's going to be a lot more of a forested map. But if we do do something that's more desert-based, I, I can see us doing something with Chariots. Um, everyone with Alpha Tester is not going to be able to test this weekend. It's going to be limited. So I would say that we will do a wide test for all of our players um, later. Uh, cosmetic items are lootable, yes. So I would be on the lookout for that. Um, that's just the direction I want to go. I know it's kind of more semi-controversial, but um, go down to the bottom. Uh, will weather have a big part in the fight? Yes, kind of. So obviously, you know, we're not gonna have blizzards. We discussed the possibility of you know doing seasons and making the game a winter map once winter starts. I don't think we're gonna do that. Um, but yeah, we are definitely going to have like rain, fog, um, in varying degrees of that. So, um, I think that'll be probably everything that I, that I answer. Uh, oh, there's one more. Okay. Blending and NASPC to run the game. So the game is extremely more optimized than Northwind. Um, we've built it out. Well, uh, I was going to kind of do a separate Northwind Q&A at some point and talk about this, but. Um, you guys may as well may as well hear it now, and it can get filtered back to Northwind, and I'll eventually tell them when I do a Q&A there soon. Um, at RDC, we discovered through our conversation with Roblox about optimization that Northwind is exploiting a really, really big bug in the Roblox engine that's causing a massive memory leak to the point of one or two gigabytes in untracked memory per user. Um, so we're working with Roblox to patch that. Uh, I anticipate Northwind getting a massive optimization boost after that, uh, and I think BI will be insanely optimized. Um, we have been building BI to be a more optimized game than Northwind from the start, not knowing that there was an engine bug or memory leak. So already BI on launch will be more optimized um, significantly. Uh, like as an example, the map is larger than Buvel. Um, it has half, the, half as many parts and about a third as many voxels. Um, and it takes up about a quarter of the memory usage. Uh, obviously things like that will change depending on players and armor and all of that. Uh, but just off of our initial test, that's kind of where we're at. So I just spit the game being a lot more um, compatible with lower-end devices, which is great. Um, new music, yes, we already have new music in the game, so no worries about that. Um, armor will not be extra health, it's just going to be dam damage reduction. Uh, but yeah, I think that's kind of everything I want to I want to talk about. Um, Anybody else on stage want to say anything? Sounded pretty solid. Oh, sounds good to me. Okay. Um, I'm not talking about who I'm voting for, um, but if anybody sees the messages I've sent to Northwind in the past, it can be guessed. Um, will art styles change? The art style is going to be similar to how it stands. Uh, why did I say? I'm not going to answer questions and continue to answer some. Um, I'll answer that and then I'm done. Uh, the art style is going to be similar to how it is in Northwind now. I really, really like the Northwind art style. I like, you know, the low poly look. I like the face. I like everything that revolves around it. And so I anticipate most, if not all, of our games will have similar art styles to that. A, it's what our developers are good with working in. Um, and B, I just enjoy it personally. Um, contrary to popular belief, this isn't a career for me. This isn't a full time job. This is a hobby. Um, and at the end of the day, it's I'm making games that I want to play. And that will be fun for me, and hopefully other people enjoy them too. So, yeah, that will be all. Um, hopefully, someone recorded this and can uh, post it somewhere. I know Arnex. I don't know if he's here, but he mentioned that he was going to try to record it. But I'm sure somebody did. So, anyways, yeah, have a good one, everyone. Uh, look out for some more announcements. We will probably do a couple more teasers next week. I know when we do testing, uh, I'm allowing everyone to film, post, share screens, whatever they want to do. So I'd be on the lookout for that. Um, and then, yeah, I hope to see you guys all in game once we launch.